Greetings, brothers and sisters. I'm Professor Spira, and this is my final day here in paradise for the time being. I'm here at this beautiful undisclosed location, and it's been wonderful just getting away from the Midwest <laughs> and the cold weather and the insanity that is the Midwest of the United States and man, just just getting get, getting back to nature to a certain extent of course with camping there's a lot of different type of camping uh, you know back in the day I would have uh, was, I was kind of a ca could have been, been a camping snob sometimes and, you know, in the Boy Scouts, I was really big into uh, Boy Scouts growing up. I'm an Eagle Scout and was a, a vigil honor member of the Order of the Arrow. And the interesting thing was, on one hand, there was sort of this contradiction. On one hand, you would be looked upon with favor if you had kind of creative things to show off and, and interesting gear and you found really unique and intelligent solutions for problems that you just are going to have during the camping process. So sometimes it'd be like, you know, little technological gadgets and all this kind of stuff that you would get. And, you know, and it, it was kind of became part of your camping character as to, you know, what kind of tent do you have and what kind of, you know, were you good at building fires and what, how did you make the fire? Did you make the fire with, uh, uh, with just the, you know, kindling tinder and fuel or did you have a fire starter? You know, it, it, and there was sort of this thing of the the more natural you were you would get respect you know some so if you build a fire without having any kind of help uh from from a fire starter you know you were going to get a little more respect and uh you know there's just a number of things along those lines but there's sort of this range of camping so you can have this low impact dispersed type of camping you just go off into the woods we, i mean you can go off with almost nothing and try to just survive but that's okay uh go off with just a ground cloth and nothing else you know and i've done that back in the day and you know the old uh, emergency preparedness uh type of stuff where you'd create you know little things it's to sleep in with with the stuff in the woods, you know, little teepees and all that kind of stuff. So there's that level, which is good to make sure that you have access to that knowledge if you have to access it. Uh, and it's smart to practice it, to keep up those skills. But as long as you know, like if something goes down, I know, I know how to survive to a certain extent, you know, that in, in yeah, I'm confident, you know, I'm going to be all right. You know, if something goes up, goes down and I'm in the woods somewhere, I'm going to be all right. But on the other side, you have like the RV level camping. So folks that's got, you know, this RVs decked out with, that's nicer than people's homes. Just these, you know, just got all kinds of stuff in there. It's just, there's nothing you know, there's nothing that's missing in terms, you know, just from all of every kitchen appliance, beds and, 
heat and air conditioning and full functioning water and bathrooms and showers. I mean, all this stuff in a vehicle that you're driving down the road. Uh, so there's that. <laughs> and then uh, and there's things in between. Uh, urban camping, you know, that's a different type of thing. You know, uh, that's what me and Brother Air used to do that. We would go to Chicago to play music on the street. And I had my car and we would, we would find places to park and then kind of be like a, you know, some type of parking situation where you're really not supposed to probably sleep in there. But we would just stay and uh, uh, catch a couple hours of sleep in, uh, you know, some parking garage or something and then just stay parked there and walk our gear to where we're going to play at. Uh, so there's that kind of thing. Then you get into the van camping and the stealth, uh, and that's what I'm interested in personally. Because I went years ago, I started really researching the RV lifestyle because I'd considered doing that before I started Mugus Free Life. I was really, really considering purchasing a, a big RV and just, <laughs> just good, that's it, you know, go off into the wilderness. And, uh, and sort of travel and lead that nomadic lifestyle. The thing that I ended up not really liking about that, like a lot of the, the RV camp camps and stuff, when I kind of checked out a lot of the places, because RVs are not le legally allowed to stay a lot of places. You can't just go to any street and park a big RV and not have the cops come knocking saying, hey, you can't be sleeping here. Or they have ordinances and all kinds of st stuff happening in different places. With a van, with a car, you know, that's just, uh, I'm not, I don't like sleeping in the car <laughs> personally. You know, just, that's not comfortable. But with a van, you know, so I, several months ago, I got this conversion van. And I'd been looking for one really the past couple of years. And I finally found a perfect conversion van for what I want great condition uh, got a good price on it so so I picked it up and it's it's stealth enough where I can park if, if I'm if I don't make stupid decisions so if I'm gonna park someplace on the street I don't even get out of the van I just drive up if I already know the spot park and then get in the back, you know, and I got blinds, you know, all kinds of stuff you can't see in, can't see me in there. And I got enough room in the back where I can create a, I, mean, I got a little air air mattress back there and stuff that I can, you know, I can fill up this air mattress and have, and there's d different options, you know, I got a, a, a couple different things I can do. But I really enjoy that type of the stealth, you know, so I can go into the woods and I can pitch a tent and camp that way. Or I can go into the urban setting, and if I need to catch some sleep from traveling, uh, you know, you learn how there's a bunch of videos on it of people that like the van life people and urban, uh, well, they don't, not urban camping, but just uh, stealth, stealth camping in a vehicle. Uh, you can check that out. There's a lot of, a lot of great uh, perspectives and things on that, but uh but that just makes the most sense to me because I, I like to travel and be able to move around, but also like to just disappear into the woods like this. I mean, this no one would know how to, <laughs> you know, there's one one person really knows where I'm at who's who who owns this property. And let me come here and uh, I'm not going to disclose uh, everything, you know, because it's, uh, it's it's a hip little situation. But. There's not necessarily a big point to this, just kind of t having a conversation about camping and different types of camping. And I think it's, I mean, I should have did this a long time ago. I really should have got back out and did this type of camping. Uh, now, of course, I, I, I like doing it by myself, at, at least at first, because it's, there's just this clarity that I get that I just I just love this clarity of thought um, and you know and I don't mind you know I like technology too so I like when 
nature and all, all that can be in concert with technology. So like right now I have this, uh, uh, this solar, right? I got a little solar, solar hookup right now. Let's see if you can, can see my little jack, jackery hookup. And, uh, you know, I let, and that's that, that little thing I can have electricity. Uh, I've been juicing, running a juicer off of, uh, with an inverter off the, the battery in my van. Cause I, I have a really nice dual purpose battery in the van. So it's, it's like, it has the deep cycle, but it also has the, the starting capacity. Uh, and so it's, it was, it was, a, it was a great battery. So I'm definitely using that thing. See over there, I got, got my luggable Lou. You see, yeah. And, uh, and there's options for that. See, what I like about camping is different options. You, you try different things. Every time you go out, test out different things. And so this time I was, I wanted to test out the luggable Lou. Uh, so I bought that as like 20 bucks at, uh, Field and Stream or Dick, Dick Sporting Goods or one of those. And, uh, and I, I like it, you know, and that's perfect for ur for urban situations. If you urban camping or you're going someplace where you're not in the woods and you don't have someplace to just go and you might not have access to bathrooms. A lot of times urban situations, you're going to have access to someplace, you know, the, some kind of public place where you can go to the bathroom if you want. But it's nice to have your own thing and it's very comp small compact uh you put bags in it i mean some people don't even use the bags they'll clean the thing out every time that's kind of yeah i like the bag <laughs> i like using the bag uh and you actually throw the bag away when it has a clip and it's legal to throw it you know throw that waste away in just a regular trash can uh now what i could have did out here was make a clearing is, and or kind of go back further far enough away from the camp and clear a path and make a little clearing and kind of and dig a little uh, latrine kind of thing dig a dig a big hole and, uh, and then you can either you know squat over the hole or uh, we used to make these little you know, boy scouts could take <laughs> this is some work but you can sort of make a little makeshift seat or something to kind of lay back on uh at, at, with some rope and some logs and things you can kind of make something that you can if you if you want to rest but of course you know there's the uh the squatty potty and this this the squat move <laughs> The squat movement, you know, which is, uh, you know, there's, there's that, that thing, you know, I, I don't, I never got too deep into that. You know, there was, there's something that a lot of people miss. I wrote an article on it years ago. Nobody liked it. You know, I mean, it was one of those. I thought it was brilliant. It, uh, not my article, but the point that I was bringing to light in the article was actually something brilliant that I thought Fred Hirsch made one of his articles I, I can't at the moment I'd, I'd had to look it up it's in one of the small uh one, one of the smaller uh books but he was taught he made a point or a connection saying w women have this tendency of living longer than men and and one difference that he observed this was probably definitely cure chronic constipation if i'm thinking about it but one thing that is observable is women sit down all the t you know when they do number one and number two you know and urinate uh, and defecate they sit down where men you know will stand up to urinate and sit down you know when they gotta do a number two and he was saying that maybe there's a connection between women sitting down because sometimes you sit down and you end up having a bowel movement you didn't even know that you could have one you didn't know there was some something there for you to to go and i for me that made all the sense in the world and so i've 
ever I mean, so for years, I mean, the past 16 years, I mostly only sit down. No, no, every time I go to the bathroom, I sit down. And that's happened a lot where I would, didn't know that I, that I had a bowel movement to make. And I sit down to do a number one and end up doing a one and a two. And so, I don't know. I think it's, it's an interesting, but, but the guys, they didn't, it, it was one of those things where it wasn't going to catch on. I don't think because when women didn't really care because they can't control the men, they, they didn't care about the article too much or that, or that passage. And, and guy, and most guys got this thing about like, I don't know, they didn't even want to hear it. I'm like, man, you better listen to this. You constipated as hell. You better be sitting down. You sit down when you pee, you understand? Whatever type of camping you are inspired to do, I encourage you to do it. Just get get out, whether if it's in a car or a van or you go out, whatever, whatever method, if you wanna do the more high impact kind of thing, or, or, or low, I mean low impact kind of thing, uh, whatever you wanna do, I, I like I said I should have did this a long time ago because I really needed to to connect and you know uh, and eventually I mean this is how we want to want to live you know, you want to get back to that and some of us will be able to get back faster than others just depends on a lot of different factors uh, but it's definitely I mean it just feels. See, I don't never get tired of of warm in sun. I I don't. I I still I cannot for the life of me understand why people. You, okay, so I can understand maybe why some people started to migrate and inhabit colder climates. There, the fall of humanity happened. And that brought on a lot of bad decision making, and uh, you know. And as the diet gets worse, you want colder temperatures. You, as they say, you, you freeze the dead. You something's dead. You gotta you know keep it frozen or keep it chilled or it rots. So there's that. But man, to not to to not migrate back. <laughs> for to, to to create civilizations in temperatures that hu humans have no business being in what the hell's wrong with us man it's i mean this it's it's okay to feel good every i mean that why not why not feel good every day i mean is that it doesn't mean that you're gonna uh, everything's gonna be great and you there's gonna be all kinds of emotional things you might have going on and personal things and you know losing family member i'm not talking about that i'm just talking about in terms of walking outside whether it's raining or whatever it's doing being like 70 degrees or higher just why would why wouldn't why would we not do that? Why would we leave and live in places that don't do that? And huge numbers of people. Ah. So as, as you can see, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm a little perturbed that I have to go back. I gotta gotta go back because we have a uh, Vig Bash that uh, we gotta make the date for Vig Bash, and then I'll be back in the uh, the Midwest mode and. Uh, we could be rehearsing with the band and all that kind of stuff, but man, this this feels good down here. I mean, this that's why I don't like the concept of vacation because to me, you should feel like that all the time. You should feel that good and that free, and whatever you're doing with your life in terms of bringing value to society, so that you can exists within whatever the structure is or the system that you find yourself in you know we we should be able to feel good have what we need now if you're somebody that loves the snow and the ice and 
in, in that type of environment, then I want you to be happy too. So stay, you know, be be happy where you at. But uh, man, it's yeah, it's it's, it's going to be hard to leave because this is huh, as I, by the time I got the camp really set up and everything, I just really just had a couple days to really enjoy the camp because a lot of the first couple days it was actually kind of chilly and kind of cloudy kind of unseasonably cold temperatures here and uh and i also took a little while to clear the camp you know it takes it can take a minute uh to kind of get get things set up and, and, and around the camp and so uh so yeah so really just had a couple of days to really just relax and enjoy but i'm gonna be back here and the next time I come, my process is going is so refined at this point that it's it's gonna be. I'm I'm gonna be here a lot longer, get a lot more sun, you know, make a lot more videos. So this is gonna be good. So I'm gonna sign off. I want to thank you for tuning in. Please hit the like button. Please hit the share button. YouTube is going nuts. There, they just don't care at all about little YouTube folks, and so they don't share. Uh, and recommend our videos anymore and so to, to get us out there uh, we, we really need help with with sharing sharing these things so but I thank you so much for tuning in and until next time peace love and breath